Welcome. Welcome to the 2021 State of the City Experience. This event is unlike anything Little Rock has experienced before. While we expect to hear important details about what's on the horizon for Little Rock from Mayor Frank Scott Jr. The State of the City is more than a speech this year. We hope you feel a sense of community and gain a deeper appreciation for who we are as a city. We've been through a lot. So much. And the COVID-19 pandemic has tested and it is testing us in ways none of us expected. But we are still here, standing together, together. surviving together. together. And there's so much to look forward to because there are great things happening in Little Rock this year. It's time to rebuild the rock. Yep, it's time. It's time. We hope you enjoy this presentation. And to help kick it off, students from all over Little Rock will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Followed by the Rodney Block Collective, featuring Bijou Piggy, Judson Spilliards, and DJ Troy G, with an amazing rendition of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Hi, I'm thrilled to bring you this amazing showcase of people and places around Little Rock. The State of the City Address is normally a speech presented by the mayor that details priorities and goals for the year ahead. By city ordinance, it must be given before March 31st. And this year, because we couldn't gather in person, it was important to my administration to create a celebration of what's good about Little Rock, you. 
So I'm happy to speak directly into your homes or wherever you may be for this virtual experience. And as we continue to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, in addition to sharing some pretty incredible plans for 2021, we brought along a first responder, a small business owner, a family new to Little Rock, and a grandmother who came out of retirement to operate a daycare for her grandkids, a mom and a principal, an ICU nurse, and a single millennial to share their experience of the past year and their aspirations for 2021. Many of us are all longing for a sense of community during this pandemic. And it's my hope that the stories told and the details about what's to come for Little Rock this year, strengthen your love for your neighbors and shows you what's possible for this city. Traditionally, I would introduce the Little Rock Board of Directors, but since we're virtual this year, directors have asked a resident to make those introductions. Here they are now. Hello, hello, my name is Sheila Miles. I am super excited to introduce our Ward 1 Director, Ms. Irma Hendricks. Hi, my name is Pamela Bingham. I have the honor of presenting to you Director of Ward 2, Ken Richardson. Hi, I'm Grant Tenniel, and I have the honor of introducing my friend and mentor, Ward 3 Director, Kathy Webb. Hi, I am Rabbi Yosef Kramer. I have the honor and pleasure to introduce to you my good friend, Kathy Peck, Little Rock City Director, Ward 4. Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Lopez, and I've got the distinct honor of introducing to you today my friend and City Director for Ward 5, Lance Hines. Hello, I'm Ann Marshall Grigsby. I'm proud to introduce our Ward 6 Director and our friend, Doris Wright. Hello everyone, I'm Melvin Moss, pastor of Henderson United Methodist Church in Southwest Little Rock. I have the wonderful privilege and honor of introducing Ward 7 Director B.J. Warwick. Hi, I'm Scott Whiteley Carter, and I have the honor of introducing At-Large Director Dean Compuris. Hi, I'm Ivan Hudson. I'm honored and absolutely thrilled to introduce my friend, At-Large City Director Antoine Phillips. Hi, I'm Little Rock City Clerk, Susan Langley, and I have the pleasure of introducing At-Large Director, Joan Adcock. Despite the major crises of 2020, I'm extremely grateful to have had the opportunity to lead our city during these trying moments. My administration and the men and women who come to work every day to serve you are leading with boldness and resolve to do what's best for the residents of Little Rock and it is with hope and anticipation that we press forward, reflecting on what 2020 taught us, that our city, we're strong. And yes, we made it. Today, we are convening our Little Rock COVID-19 Task Force. Lastly, get the facts and latest updates at littlerock.gov slash COVID-19. But in the midst of that, we were able to be creative to protect lives by instituting our curfews, as well as uh, other laws in place to protect lives and slow the community spread. And we've seen because of those early and aggressive actions that we have saved lives in the city of Little Rock, and we're grateful for that. It's made up of $500,000 to assist the Little Rock small businesses. Each struggling business can apply for a zero interest loan up to $5,000. I want to just take a few moments of silence that we can commemorate and remember those lives that have been lost in the last year. May we be able to build with hope and joy, never 
forgetting the lives that have been lost. We have some good news tonight. And this is really big news for Little Rock in Central Arkansas. Amazon is coming to the capital city. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. made the announcement tonight at the Board of Directors meeting. Today, uh, we kick it off with Asher Avenue. Our most significant uh, plans for UA Little Rock property on Asher Avenue is the redevelopment of the Plaza Shopping Center. The first major project of the Little Rock Mayor's Asher Revitalization Initiative broke ground today. LRPD will have a new addition to their uniforms. It's this little box, a body camera, and it's not only to ensure accountability for the officers, but for the citizens as well. And to turn it on, it's one click, and the light turns from green to red. This is the city of Little Rock's second uh, opportunity to truly focus on education and education month in this very intentional matter. But today this is about uh, broadband and in particular this is about the issue of digital equity. And there are three key elements to digital equity. The first of those is equity and connectivity. The second is equity in appropriate devices. And third, it is equity in digital literacy. Restaurants are the backbone of a community. They are its culture. Well, the pandemic actually started right around like, the restaurant's birthday. And we just hit five. And the fifth birthday for a restaurant is huge. And it became year one of operation all over again. We had to completely redefine our restaurant. And then that day, the check from the city came in and opened it up, screamed, I've got to take this to the bank right now. Because, I mean, I have employees to pay. I have paychecks to cut and was so thankful. We weren't forced to close down. We were able to recreate the dining experience to make it safe for people. We were able to keep operation running and continue to keep our restaurant afloat and alive. And we did through curbside and then outdoor dining. And when outdoor dining became allowed, we were able to do that sidewalk dining in two days. Like that's how fast the city turned around. Because we're allowed to do that, we are able to keep so many people employed within yeah. Little Rock. Community is everything. These lights would be off if we didn't have community. The greatness of Little Rock really came out during this pandemic. You know, it's people, it's government, it's families, um, it's businesses. 
we want to make that small difference. And, you know, we can only make that difference with the people that we come in contact with. And that's why it was so important that we made sure that the people that came to us felt loved. I really showed greatness during this past year, and I'm so thankful to call Little Rock my home. I've been a firefighter at Little Rock for almost 19 years. The best part about my job is when we get to celebrate with a patient and a family as they get better and move out and they continue to heal in their disease process. That's what makes the job worthwhile. This job awards us the opportunity to help others in their time of need. COVID-19 was very hard. It's been a very dark year for us, um, I think for all healthcare workers. The way we run our calls were impacted a little bit at the beginning because we weren't sure the way the CDC advised we should do things. One of the things that it taught us is it's extremely important to rely on your team. You go into this not knowing anything about it because it's brand new. I think overall with everything the City of Little Rock has done, they've made sure that we've had the equipment that we've needed. Uh, we never run short. Even during this whole pandemic that's been going on, the services of the fire department have never faltered. We've been there the entire time and we've been 100% throughout. I hope by the end of 2021, we can look at COVID and say, these are the things that we learned. We can celebrate the successes that we had and we can move forward and hopefully, if and when a new pandemic tries to come back, we, we already know how to handle it. My husband and I came to Little Rock um, because we were very interested in the different programs at UAMS and the Veterans Affairs Hospital. We were in California, in San Diego, where he was finishing his training and I was working. And we found these great opportunities to become a part of kind of growing places and really decided that that's why we should come to Little Rock. When we first moved here, I was just trying to get used to living in Little Rock and getting used to getting to work and knowing the people there and focusing on doing my job well. And then COVID hit and that really, really affected things in a big way. Moving in the middle of the pandemic was stressful to say the least. It's having to you know, find a new place to live and all that kind of stuff that's hard to do when you can't move around so freely. We had a very supportive group here from a personal and professional standpoint to help us with that transition. UAMS Arkansas Children's did a wonderful job bringing me into the fold despite all the restrictions that were going on. I couldn't you know, launch my career as quickly as I wanted to at work. Uh, we had to slow down with the procedure volume we're doing. It was harder to take care of patients who did not have urgent or emergent issues. We just couldn't explore. We always wanted to go to Fayetteville. Um, I was really looking forward to going to Razorback games. I'm a big basketball fan, and I couldn't do any of that stuff in pandemic. Now that things are getting a little bit better as far as vaccinations go and all of that, we've been venturing out a teeny bit more. I actually went hiking in Pinnacle Mountain with one of my friends, you know, uh, the Great Dam Bridge and the Big Dam Bridge, which was a, a treat and very beautiful and lovely. Actually, one of my favorite things about the city is I can just run outside and take Markham all the way down, take it to Rodney Parham, and it's just a real, real great way to experience the city. And so I'm looking forward to doing outdoor stuff, getting into restaurants once we're safely able to do so, shopping and all that kind of stuff. It's been a little strange, but again, you know, we're working through it and I'm super excited for really exploring the city and finding all that it has to offer. I moved to Little Rock, Arkansas 10 years ago. I came here to attend Philander Smith College. And I always use everything in basketball metaphor because I play ball. Little Rock reminds me of the, the player that you keep on the bench at the end because you know you're gonna need that player in order to make some solid clutch shots. You have shooting the threes, which is having local eateries. You have in different parks, different trails different small businesses. And so Little Rock has a lot to offer. However, people have to be willing to dig in and find those treasures because if you stay to one side or stay to your side of the city or stay to your, and just in your corner, of course you're not going to know what Little Rock has to offer. And I just enjoy the people here. I made great friendships here. And the cost of living here is inexpensive. 
I enjoy being able to live where I live at an affordable price. You know, Little Rock is one of a kind, and it's just so much that Little Rock has to offer. So Yaya Preschool came about when uh, the pandemic hit and my daughter and her husband um, elected to keep the kids home rather than sending them to school and daycare. I had retired a few years ago, and so I was readily available to take care of them. And so Yaya Preschool was born. I've found resources online and, and through the library and through other organizations. And one of the ones that um, has been super successful for us is um, a little passports and uh, PBS does that. And so this week we happen to be studying um, Brazil. So they have different modules, some are geography related and culture and language, and then others are science-based. And um, so before uh, we studied Brazil, we were studying uh, volcanoes, and before that, uh, Waddell seals in Antarctica. My uh, daughter and her husband are both educators. They've been working some remotely, some virtually, and then um, and also in person. Because of their, their teaching schedules, um, they're happy to be able to keep the kids at home and, and reduce the, the exposure to others. Um, looking ahead to later on in 2021, we are looking forward to the kids maybe going back to school Yay. and daycare. Uh, this fall, uh, just a you know, more normal schedule where we can be with people and entertain, go out to eat, and all the things that we haven't been doing during the pandemic. I'm a, I'm a principal here at Chico. I'm married, I've got uh, five children. I'm half Arabic, I'm also Caucasian and Native American. My husband is black and Native American. Having that perspective of when we started dating and what Little Rock looked like and diversity looked like is very different. Because I think that uh, awareness around perspectives and respecting others is where we need to grow as a society and as a community. COVID-19, I think, has impacted, of course, everyone, as we know, around the globe. I knew what my experience had been um, with my children in the spring as a parent. I knew the adjustments that they were having to make and a very unique opportunity to have that perspective, to be an administrator and to be a parent. All the time I got to think, well, how would this impact my children? And seeing our students here as, you know, what if that was my child? And what if I was the parent in this situation? And how could I navigate that? The journey has really been about um, flexibility, coming together, and problem solving. Um, and I think when we do those things, um, we bring out the best in others. And I get to see all the great things that these teachers are doing and how they're working to engage my children who are virtual and their in-person uh, students. And they're still learning and doing well in school. And so while COVID-19 obviously has had tremendous negative impacts in so many ways, I think there's a lot of positives that I can say that we've walked away from, and I hope that we have um, some increased and deepened awakening into our potential when we really work together. Wow, what amazing stories. I'm grateful for each of those residents who shared their gifts, their grit, and gratitude with us tonight. We've highlighted some of the best of our city, from business owners to essential workers, healthcare workers to first responders, educators, parents, and students. You have endured so much this past year. Having seen your dedication and durability during this pandemic and all the other challenges that have faced our community across the past year, I'm more honored and humbled, more honored and humbled than ever to be your mayor. After a tumultuous 2020, if there is any doubt of the resilience, revival, and renewal of Little Rock, this year will be our answer. Our recovery belongs to each of you, and we are poised to rebuild the rock in 2021 to be better than our beginning. Last year, I stood before you declaring our bold plans to lift Little Rock to high heights. Shortly after I cast that vision, the world as we knew it changed. We immediately suspended our initiatives to lift Little Rock and focused squarely on navigating the COVID-19 global pandemic. And to truly rebuild, we must continue our concerted efforts to combat this virus. We still encourage you to wear a mask, wash your hands, physically distance yourselves, and get tested whenever you believe you need one. 
but we've also placed a major focus on a swift and equitable distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine in our city. I acknowledge and understand the hesitancy or even the distrust of the coronavirus vaccine rooted in a painful history of abuse towards people of color. But I'm disheartened by the data that shows blacks, Hispanics and Asians are at a higher risk for contracting COVID-19, needing care in a hospital and even dying from the disease. This is personal to all of us. The vaccines are our best chance at keeping our community healthy, restoring normalcy and rebuilding our city. So I'm urging all of Little Rock residents to take the vaccine as soon as it is your turn to do so. We will ensure the vaccine is available to all communities, especially those impacted the most by this virus. I'm asking our COVID-19 task force to shift its efforts to a comprehensive plan for the city to get the crucial task completed. We must educate our residents on the vaccine, recommend community outreach initiatives, and use data to ensure our equitable distribution of vaccines and other resources in our city to curb this virus immediately. Defeating this pandemic will allow us to move forward to an even brighter day for the Little Rock we know and love. Looking to the future, I'm asking the Little Rock Board of Directors to pass an ordinance creating Little Rock's Health and Wellness Commission that will launch this year. This commission will focus on improving the quality of life for Little Rock residents by promoting physical and mental wellness, providing resources and programs to promote healthfulness and recommending the policies to address health disparities and other detrimental issues. For far too long, the city of Little Rock has been hands off when it comes to public health. Because of this pandemic, we know now more than ever that local government plays an important role in the health of its residents. Moving forward, this new standing commission will allow us to both react quicker to health crises and be proactive to better serve the healthcare needs of our diverse community. As we know, there have been many challenges we face that show the power of climate change. The historic flooding of 2019, unprecedented snowstorms just a month ago, and other natural disasters demonstrate the importance of being a good steward of the environment. City government must lead the way and this year we will commit to an energy reduction plan across city operations, including a fleet of electric vehicles with the company infrastructure by 2030. We'll purchase electricity from renewable resources, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and make energy efficiency upgrades in our facilities. We have a long way to go, but we plan to do our part to preserve the environment for our future. In this rebuilding of the rock, Let's be big, be bold, and be brave in our efforts to unite, grow, and transform our city. My personal mission since deciding to run for mayor of our great city has been to unite Little Rock. To do that, we will continue to make equity the central thing of everything we do. Many ask, what is equity? To me, it is the customized efforts taken to ensure adequate access, opportunity, and representation despite one's circumstances. In short, Equity is meeting people where they are, so they can be who they are, where they want to be, all at the same time. Equity at Work is the city's reentry program, our community schools model, our south of 630, east of 30 revitalization incentive plan, or our down payment assistance program. It's ensuring diverse voices are elevated at the table and varied viewpoints are heard. It's good for business, it's good for innovation, and it's necessary to rebuild the rock. Because of this, it is such a priority for my administration. I'm excited to announce the city's new chief equity officer in the coming weeks. This individual will first assist us in getting our house in order, then help us expand these efforts throughout Little Rock. And thanks to the leadership of directors Kathy Webb and Kathy Peck, this year the Little Rock Board of Directors, city executive leadership, and various staff will undergo training from the National League of Cities and its Race, Equity, and Leadership Department to normalize racial equity as a key value in our city. This work will strengthen our capacity to make Little Rock a more equitable place to live, work, and play. 2020 made us take a hard look at our racial injustice in our country. Little Rock, like every American city, experienced civil and social unrest due to the continued wounds at home and across the United States. Our city remains divided physically by manufactured boundaries like the Interstate 630 and economically by systemic disparities. This has been resulted in a city split between North and South. 
I know the numerous gifts of those living and working south of 630 and in my neighborhood in Southwest Little Rock. But those hardworking residents too often lack the resource to allow their gifts to shine. We cannot have a unified city until we have a city in which all residents, whether they're from Southwest, Pleasant Valley, East End, John Barrow, or Chennault can thrive. After last year's census efforts, we have an opportunity to redraw our wards to reflect the united city we strive to be. Instead of homogenous wards with arbitrary boundaries like Interstate 630, our proposed wards that reflect the overall makeup of our city. And I'm asking the city board to ensure our wards look like microcosms of our diverse city. As we rebuild the rock into an equitable community of opportunity for all, we unite when we strategically address our economy. Over 60 years after the integration of the historic Central High School, racial wealth gaps along with economic immobility remain too prevalent. We must honor our rich civil rights history by acting with urgency to address these ills. Last year, I announced a lofty goal for the city to increase its women and minority spend to at least 25% by the end of 2022. And we will continue to leverage our purchasing power to support local companies to kickstart our economy post pandemic. This year, I'm taking it a step further by calling on our fellow public entities and even private companies to join us making a larger collective impact. By October 1st, we will issue Little Rock's Equity Challenge, asking entities across Little Rock to sign on to this initiative to promote equity in their businesses through supplier diversity and other corporate policies. We know that no one organization can solve our systemic issues, but collectively, we can work together to improve our city. Together, Little Rock will become a place where the American dream is alive and well for us all. Quality of life in place will be the basis for equitable economic development as we rebuild the rock. And I must pause here because we've experienced historic jobs growth during a pandemic with nearly 4,000 new jobs. Hear that again, 4,000 announced since I took office. This is more than mere numbers. These jobs mean more resources for families in Little Rock. It's the ability to put food on your table and clothes on your child's back to pay the bills. As you see, yes, economic development is truly our mission and a ministry. While we will continue our efforts to attract new jobs, we know that entrepreneurship also builds wealth and provides stability for families and communities. New businesses are the lifeblood of a city, but the pandemic has exposed the disparities in who's able to get ahead. This begs the question, what can we do to create new jobs, level the playing field, and reduce economic injustice during the recovery? Little Rock's answer is Build Academy, a 12-week small business incubator to serve as a front door for current and future business owners in our city. This will be a game changer. We're taking economic development into the neighborhoods that have historically been left behind in order to create, build, and sustain more companies here at home. Build is short for businesses united in leadership development that connects potential with opportunity. Throughout Little Rock, the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. Through strategic location and design in the heart of the 12th Street Corridor at our very own soon to be renovated Willie Hinton Center, BUILD aims to create opportunity by addressing wealth gaps and access in one of the most economically disadvantaged areas of Little Rock. We know the sacrifice it takes for an entrepreneur to step out on faith, to pursue a dream, we want to be a city that supports the sheer grit of business owners. We'll provide resources and create conditions necessary for businesses to launch and expand. BUILD will empower our entrepreneurs to scale their businesses, address income disparity, and access to capital, fill the education gaps through technical assistance, and decrease unbanked and underbanked populations right here in our city. On April 15, we will begin accepting applications at LittleRock.gov for BUILD Academy's first class later this year. To further unite and grow our city, we will continue investing in Little Rock's most precious assets, our youth. We've seen real promise and tremendous progress with our community schools model in its early months and will continue to bolster our efforts and programs this year with plans to expand the model to additional schools in partnership with the Little Rock School District. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has severely disrupted student learning. Many students are not showing up for class at all, or if they are, they're unable to succeed in the virtual learning experience. As we rebuild the rock, the city will harness this best of educational programs
to re-engage these students. For example, this summer, Frankly Reading will target those kids in elementary to be sure they don't have further learning loss over the long break. In addition to the expansion of community schools, our community centers will transform into opportunity centers with a particular focus on re-engaging students who fell behind during the pandemic. And it's not enough to focus on our youngest students. We must provide support for students who want to pursue an education after high school. I'm asking our chief education officer and the Higher Education Council to identify potential partnerships with our local philanthropic and business community to fund a Little Rock Promise Scholarship. This scholarship would do these three things. One, attract and keep families in Little Rock. Two, strengthen our workforce. And number three, and ensure access and opportunity to those who need it most. As we already seen tonight, Little Rock has amazing people. I love this city and its communities, cultures, and character. And while the Little Rock Convention and Visitors Bureau has done a great job promoting Little Rock to travelers, it's time to rebrand our city and build a unique narrative that sells Little Rock as a place for short-term business and play, but also as a place to call home and build a family. I recognize that for many who already live here or those who reside just outside of the city, your perceptions have been shaped in part by misinformation and decades of inequities. As we look to the future, it's time that we rebuild hope in the hearts of those who call Little Rock home. Rebuild confidence in those who look for Little Rock to lead and rebuild capacity for placemaking that ensures equitable opportunities for everyone. It's time we rebuild the Rock. Our city will undergo a facelift in the coming months with a new logo, website, flag, and mobile app where we will continue to restore a sense of pride in the place we call home while also positioning ourselves to attract businesses and residents to Little Rock. Now here's a bit of nostalgia. In the days of Riverfest, when I was growing up, where residents and tourists of all backgrounds crowded our city streets, flooded our restaurants on those hot summer days, and swarmed our hotels, our rebranding will also give for opportunities for people to sample our city again. We're going to create intentional interactions among residents and visitors and become a premier destination in the state, region, and nation. I'm calling on Little Rock Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce, residents and tourists alike to help us launch Little Rock signature event in 2022. Lit Fest, a return to the rock. This extended weekend festival will have a major economic impact. Lit Fest will promote business and technology with dynamic panel discussions, investor conferences, and networking opportunities. Lit Fest will also highlight the diverse art scene of our city with live concerts from local and national artists, while also featuring dynamic local food I've heard it too often from visitors. I didn't know Little Rock was this amazing. Well, yes, we really are. It's time that the world knows what we have to offer. And when it's safe to gather again, Lit Fest showcases the very best about our home. To pull this off, we will leverage the Little Rock network far and wide. If you were born or bred here, relocated here, visited once upon a time, or just heard about us, I'm asking you to return to The Rock in 2022 to witness the rebrand firsthand. Now, over this next year, we cannot be satisfied with just recovering. No, we must commit to taking critical actions that catapult us into our future. Now is the time for Little Rock to innovate, not stagnate. We need your help. Help to rebuild by investing in our city through our Rebuild The Rock Penny Sales Tax Initiative. Time is of the essence as we position ourselves to emerge from this pandemic better than before. Little Rock can and will be the catalyst for the New South with a new sales tax comparable to our neighbors. Just one penny more will allow us to improve the quality of life for all of Little Rock. A penny will help us rebuild the rock by building an equitable economic development program that offers incentives to attract and recruit companies to Little Rock, increase jobs, and most importantly, assist with the growth and development of businesses that are already here. Little Rock is well suited to become an ideal destination for manufacturing companies, startups, nonprofits, and small businesses. I'm committed to my role as Chief Growth Officer, and these additional resources will allow our administration to be more aggressive in recruiting and supporting these businesses when they are here. A penny helps us to rebuild the Rock by expanding early childhood education for infants and toddlers 
while also investing in their future with a contribution to a 529 plan for every kindergartner in the Little Rock Public School. Too many of our community's children are left in care of a family members at the age when early learning is critical. And oftentimes, young workers have to make the very tough decisions to try and pay for high quality early childhood education. A city investment will eliminate the financial strain on parents that need to work, provide technical assistance and training for providers, and expand quality early childhood education centers across the areas south of 630 and southwest Little Rock which also supports our commitment to community schools. If we have the will, we can make Little Rock the best city in the Mid-South for high quality early childhood education and become a magnet for young families. An extra penny helps us revitalize War Memorial and Hyman Parks and connects them with a state-of-the-art trail system. It also makes critical improvements to other park facilities and expands offerings at the zoo. As a city in the park, as you know we all are, Little Rock is a crown jewel for outdoor adventure, recreation, and entertainment. While Hyman has the terrain for various activities like disc golf, fishing, and biking, War Memorial is centrally located and serves as a multi-use park for everyone to enjoy. Not only do we envision open line entertainment and green space, the city could host revenue attracting youth sports tournaments and local leagues at new baseball fields or the youth sports complex. Next door, our zoo is suited to become one of the top attractions in our state and region with additions like the proposed giraffe exhibit. What else does this one penny do? It creates an affordable housing fund to acquire, develop, and rehabilitate affordable housing in the heart of our city. Even today, wealth creation is tied to real estate and home ownership. This housing fund will allow us to address inequities and make the dreams of owning a home a reality for moderate income residents. This fund will also offer much needed solutions to homelessness in Little Rock. A penny helps rebuild the rock by revitalizing our neighborhoods with strategic infrastructure improvements. To become the city we are destined to be, we need better roads, additional bike lanes, and sidewalks in every neighborhood, irrespective of the zip code throughout our city. By rebuilding neighborhoods, we uplift and improve the quality of life and attract much needed economic development and opportunities. And lastly, just one additional penny helps reform public safety by decreasing response times, investing in technology, and enhancing our community, policing with data-driven efforts to reduce crime. We will address critical needs by building a fire station in West Little Rock and hire experienced personnel to handle very intimate and certain mental health situations. We will appoint a Rebuild the Rock committee to provide oversight for the sales tax. They'll evaluate spending, monitor ongoing projects, and recommend future improvements to ensure the utmost accountability with your sales tax dollars. Rebuild the Rock will allow our city to repair what we do, rebrand who we are, and recalibrate how we think. As you can see, our Rebuild the Rock sales tax is appropriate transparent and timely response to a pandemic that has knocked us down but did not knock us out. It will allow us to generate revenue, create new jobs, support small businesses, expand educational opportunities, redevelop and reimagine parks and zoo, invest in our underserved areas, and upgrade critical infrastructure in our city, and improve public safety. I think we all agree it's time to rebuild. If we unite, grow, and transform our city through these strategic initiatives, we will chart a new course for the city of Little Rock. Little Rock, we're resilient. I know we will rebuild our city to be better than ever before. We collectively understand the task that lies ahead. We know the various challenges we have been faced with and more are also sure to come. But like always, we band together to overcome any obstacle we face. By rebuilding together, we can make Little Rock safer, more equitable, more business friendly, and more sustainable for our future. To the healthcare workers and first responders who saw us through a difficult year, let's rebuild the rock. To the ambitious entrepreneur and the laid off employee, let's rebuild the rock. To the student from any area of our city, underserved zip code, and the educators burned out from virtual instruction, let's rebuild the rock. 2021 is the beginning of a new era, a new chapter in our story, 
a chapter of unity, growth, and transformation for our great city. Together we can and together we will rebuild the rock. I appreciate you. God bless you. May God bless our great city of Little Rock and let's rebuild together.